Life processes in living organisms. Cell division. The cells in the body of living organisms can divide and two cells are formed from a single cell. Due to this characteristic of cells, living organisms can grow, make up the wear and tear in the body and can give rise to new organisms. Every cell in our body has a nucleus and other cell organelles. According to the species, definite number of chromosomes are present in the nucleus. These chromosomes are visible only at that time of cell division. Otherwise, they are in the form of a single long thread called chromatin. The cell division occurs in two ways, mitotic and meiotic. In mitosis, the number of chromosomes in the daughter cells is equal to that in the parent cells. Whereas, in meiosis, the chromosome number in the parent cells is halved in the daughter cells. Mitosis occurs in the somatic cells and the stem cells in our body, whereas meiosis occurs in our germ cells. In any type of cell division, first the nucleus divides, that is karyokinesis, and then the division of cytoplasm, that is cytokinesis, takes place. Mitosis In this type of cell division, division of nucleus takes place in the following four steps. A. Prophase in this phase, as the thread-like chromosomes coil and become shorter and thick, they are visible. Each chromosome shows two distinct threads called as sister chromatids joined at a point called the centromere. The centriole divides into two and they move to the opposite poles of the cell. The nuclear membrane and the nucleolus start disappearing. Metaphase In this phase, the nuclear membrane completely disappears. The coiling of chromosomes is complete and they are distinctly visible. They are arranged in the central plane of the cell. Flexible fibers of special proteins called spindle fibers are formed in between each centriole and centromere of the chromosomes. Anaphase In this phase, the centromere of each chromosome is split into two parts with the help of spindle fibers. The two chromatids are separated and pulled towards the opposite poles. These separated chromatids are called daughter chromosomes. In this way, one set of chromosomes reaches each pole of the cell. Telophase In this phase, the chromosomes reached at the two poles of the cell uncoil, become thin, thread-like and again form chromatin network. The nuclear membrane is formed around chromatin at each pole. In this way, two daughter nuclei are formed within one cell. The nucleoli are also formed in each daughter nucleus. The spindle fibers disappear completely. In this way, the nuclear division is complete and the division of cytoplasm starts. In this process, a furrow or a notch is formed in the cytoplasm parallel to the central plane of the cell. It becomes deeper towards the center of the cell and two new cells are formed. In a plant cell, the cell plate is formed in the middle of the cell instead of the notch and the cell division is completed. Two new daughter cells are formed by division of cytoplasm. Mitosis is essential for the growth of our body and to make up the loss by wear and tear, healing of wounds and for the formation of blood cells. Meiosis. It gets completed in two phases called as meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In meiosis 1, some fragments of chromosomes are exchanged between homologous chromosomes. This is called crossing over or recombination. Then, these pairs of homologous chromosomes are arranged one below the other in a vertical line and they are divided into two sets. This process results in the formation of two haploid cells having chromosome number half of the parent cell. Meiosis II is just like mitosis. In this stage, the two haploid daughter cells formed in the meiosis I divide to form four haploid cells. The process of formation of gametes and spores occurs by meiosis. During the cell division, crossing over takes place between the homologous chromosomes. Hence, four daughter cells formed are genetically different from the parent cell and from each other.